Hello, hello, Eddie Gray here. Welcome to the Modern Creative. Listen, today we're going to talk about the UF8. There are pros, certainly there are cons. I want to get right into it, but before we do, please do not be a wallflower. Participate in this process of giving and taking, and do me a favor. Go ahead and like, go ahead and share, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. It's astonishing to me how many people visit the channel that are not subscribers yet. Uh, if you want to support the work that I do, I'm writing a book, I'm creating all sorts of great Logic Pro training resources, go ahead and check out the links in the description. All right, let's get into it. Here we go. All right, good people, let's get started. So here we have two UF8s put together. And if you're interested in seeing how I set this up in the most unique way possible with Logic Pro, check out my other channel at that Logic Pro guy, where I will talk about integration with the UF8, learning how to maximize two or more units. And even if you just have one, I have a really cool method that will really help you use UF8 in the best way possible with Logic Pro. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the basics here. So DAW communication via the UF8 happens with an old protocol called Mackey MCU. It's a terrible protocol, I gotta be honest. I'm hoping that, I don't know, they, they pull something off behind the scenes and it starts to work in a more efficient way, but that's just kind of what it is. Now there's something else to notate. If I open up the 360 software with the punch of this button here. This happens with the proprietary software, control of the 360 software with the UF8. This part is ingenious and I love how efficient it is. So if I go into layer one here, which corresponds with this green button, you can see that I have a bunch of key commands laid out and then I have various banks. So you can have a lot of options via the eight push buttons here and the eight pan pots as well. So just to be clear, communication from the UF8 to the 360 software does not require MCU. There is something else happening and so this is why this part is so stable. It's everything within the Mackie world that I have a problem with. So let's talk about some of the things that I like. I particularly enjoy the fact that you can do things like assign track outputs or sends via the controller. I mean, that's just amazing. Like for example, on audio track number one, if I wanted to create a bus, you can do it just like that. And we know that in Logic, as soon as you create a bus assignment, you're also creating an automatic auxiliary track. So that kind of stuff is unbelievable. I love things like this. If I open up, let's say, EQ and I just want to simply get rid of it. You have these quick keys that make life so easy. There's a lot of things that we all do a hundred billion times a session. Quick keys will take care of that. Uh, if you have two units, it really becomes powerful because I have quick keys assigned to this specific unit and quick keys assigned to this unit. And you don't see it under the desk, but you could also set up foot controllers for things like playback, recording and such. Something else that I really like in what's called plugin mode is the fact that you can open up plugins on their respective slot. When I press the down arrow button, you can see that I am now on slot number two, which is the compressor. If I go back up to slot number one, I am on the EQ. Again, I have this quick key so that I can hide the plugin or I have this one here, which basically closes the plugin. Those kind of things, this thing is money. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There's a bunch of weird menu diving that has to happen as well. For example, we have something called the plugin view. There's something called the channel view and then the instrument edit view as well. So that can get a bit hairy, but I can kind of live with it. Let me show you what channel view looks like. So if I click on plugin, I know I'm on channel view because on track number two, I have channel EQ on insert one, and then a compressor on the second slot. If I then move key focus from track two to track one, you can see that when I'm in channel view, 
I see the EQ there. So this is a dichotomy that's happening. We have the ability to see each channel, but then you have what's called mixer view, which allows you to see everything that's happening on slot number one. So on slot number one, for this track, I have an EQ, 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 EQ. Okay, well, when I shift over to the next slot, which is slot number two in Logic, we have up to 15 blank slots. I only have compressors on track number two and on track number four. So that can get a little bit weird, and I haven't even talked about the instrument edit view. So let's say I go into track number three where I do have an instrument slot inserted and I do click on instrument. Now I'm working with parameters inside of that instrument and then the same goes for plugins. If I click on plugin and as I said if I have an EQ now I'm working and editing in what's called the plugin edit view. It does take some time to get used to. To be honest still getting used to it myself but I do find it a worthy investment. This works for me. I don't think this is for everybody. I've said it before. I really think it's a glorious, luxurious MIDI controller. And if you watched my other video, I have a bunch of other gripes. I want to stay on the positive today. So let's look at a couple more things. Okay, so clicking on the plugin button one time takes me into mixer view. If I click one more time, the channel view button lights up. This gives me the indication that I am now in channel mode. Again, if I click on instrument and I am in fact using a software instrument, I will start to play with the instrument. Then if I close that up and I want to work with a plugin, I have to click here one more time and now I can start EQing like so. So Mixer View is going to allow you to edit one parameter across the entire page. So I've got an EQ on every single one of these tracks. So if I click on EQ, you can see that uh, in the EQ thumbnail, I'm controlling all of low cuts with just a simple turn of the dial. So that's pretty smooth. So Mixer View is going to allow you to change one parameter across the entire view. So for example, if I want to simply pan, I can pan here. This is all on one screen. If you want to reset, you can just click on the buttons there. It takes you back to the default view. So that is mixer view but if there was something you wanted to do that was a bit more specific to the channel then you would have to go into channel view so let's say i wanted to work with this eq but i wanted to make changes across all tracks you would go into mixer view click on eq and now i'm controlling low cut all across the board here you can see that functioning inside of the eq thumbnails and then as you go along, you're controlling low shelf and other parts of the parametric EQ. So that's pretty sweet. So whereas mixer view is about one parameter, the channel view has multiple parameters. So let's see if we can pull this off. I am on track number four, selected it with this button here. And I want to edit a couple of different things at once. So I've got an EQ and a compressor on track number four. And if there was something I wanted to do with the EQ or the compressor, I can simply click on the button there, make any and all changes. Let's say bring up the threshold, maybe change the type of compressor. My default is always pan because this kind of takes me back to step one where I can control volume here or I can pan. Now, if you didn't know about the flip function, this is pretty amazing. Let's say you're not a rotary knob kind of person. If you simply hit flip, you can control your pan settings or any settings by using the faders. So that's pretty great. If you didn't know, these are motorized faders. They feel really good. I do think that the quality is a bit cheap. I do have to admit, I wasn't really impressed with the parts, but the build is definitely a monster. It feels really good in that regard. All right, so I'm going to go to track number two now. This also has a compressor and I am in mixer view. And if I click on plugin one more time, now I am in channel mode and I can see track number two has an EQ and a compressor. So here's another way to look at it. I'm going to create different sends. And if I click on send one time, I am in what's called mixer view. I can create a send destination here. 
if I didn't want to control the destination but the level, I can simply click here one time and now I can send a little bit of, in this case, bus 13 with the pan pots here. Now remember I am still in flip mode so I'm going to turn that back so that these faders are not controlling volume and the pan pots are doing what they need to do up here, controlling the bus. Now if I press that send key one more time, I will no longer be in mixer view, I will be in channel view. So if I click here, you can see that I'm controlling the destination, the level, if this is going to be pre-fader, post-fader. So that's pretty cool too. I do have to give them credit for that. I love this feature. And then if this is going to be bypassed or not. So that's kind of the big thing is just getting used to channel view and the mixer view. So when I click on this instrument, I'm using a quick sampler. And so that is what I'm going to see on the screen there on the display, but also here. So let's say we wanted to play with the filter or what have you, we can do all of that here. So that's the difference between being in mixer channel view and being an instrument edit view. All right, so to sum it up, if you have one unit, you can use three buttons as it relates to the quick keys. If you have two units, you've got six of these. If you have another, obviously that would be nine. So the pan button, there's no customization. Here you get fixed settings. So you could think of these like commands, like instruments, sends, you have track, you have EQ, a group function, and then marker and nudge. This cannot be changed. What you can change are the banks here. So these banks are all customizable. There are five of them, one, two, three, four, five. Now, with each unit, you're going to get eight different commands. So if we're just talking one unit, you're gonna get 40 different key commands available to you. So you can set up eight key commands there, eight key commands there, here, here, and here. So that's a lot of power. If you have two units, that goes from 40 to 80 different key commands made available to you just within arm's reach. Now, I'm gonna show you a technique again in that other video when you follow at that Logic Pro guy, where I can take one unit from 40 all the way to 120 different key commands, and I can take two units from 80 all the way up to 240. So go ahead and follow, subscribe, all that stuff. Now, we're supposed to have what's called Logic Programmable User Modes. I don't find they work very well, but that would definitely bring up the selection considerably. For example, if you have one unit, you can have eight different assignments per mode, so that would give you 48 different assignments. And if you have two units, you can have 16 different assignments per mode, and that'll give you 96 assignments. So it's really mind-bending, but again, I tried using Logic programmable modes, but they don't seem to work very well. They don't seem to stick within what we call the controller assignment window here. All right, so I'm gonna sum this video up. What I love about the unit, the 360 software, is deep. I love how you can program this. There's a lot of different layers and, and, and there has been a, a big shift in my workflow in terms of removing the tendency to touch the keyboard. I had um, a rock session the other day uh, writing for a publisher and I was mostly using the unit to record for transport capabilities to control different plugins. I was definitely not um, you know, leaning forward into the keyboard, the trackpad, the mouse. My attention was in this area, and that definitely was fun. It was nice to, to change it up. Cons, the Mackie protocol. Cons, the Mackie protocol. It is not great. Uh, I don't feel the units are very well documented. I, I definitely feel like it could have been done better. Uh, for what you're getting, this is definitely very pricey. Considering the clunky workflow, it doesn't seem to add up in my eyes, but I do have you know a certain kind of love for it. And so, as I've mentioned before, this is gonna stay in the studio for a little bit at the very least. So tell me what you guys think about the UF8. And again, if you are interested in checking out what I call the ultimate logic controller, go to my other channel and uh, I'll see you there. All right, take good care. We're gonna get out of here. Eddie Gray signing off, let's go.